Rick B's Daily Vlogs. No ocean, no waves, no water, but a nice view of the Transamerica building, also known as the Pyramid, with the Bay Bridge as a backdrop. But I'm here for a different type of reason. And these tracks has something to do with it. Let's get this started. interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Welcome everyone, it's my daily vlog channel, Eric B's Daily Vlogs. I always wanted to hit this spot for the longest time, but today being a national holiday, found out it was open, so I jumped in the car, drove around the blocks a thousand times. I'm in the Chinatown Knob Hill neighborhood, and you know parking here is terrible, but I'm here to go check out this one thing. Actually, it's a few things. Let's go check this out. Let's go. Right here in the corner of Washington and Mason. And yes, these cable car lines has something to do with it because I'm in the cable car museum. Let's go see what they have inside. Pretty cool. And always a good sign when it's free. Let's go see what they got. No food, no drinks, no trash. Those are the hours. This right here is a time clock from 1900. That's how you see a clock in and out before going to work. Pretty cool. They got a bunch of other cool memorabilia on the wall as well. And some old cable car signage. But we're going to start off up there where there's a lot of people. Shows you exactly where you want to go. If you want to go to the Sheev room viewing area downstairs, or if you want to check out the museum main floor, it's upstairs. And again, no food or drinks. Let's make our way up. An old cart of what a cable car used to look like. Down here they have the little mechanical room that moves the cable car. If you see the signage right there, this one is for Powell Street. That one is Mason, California, and Hyde. Pretty cool technology that they have right here. Some vintage chairs. How you used to ride the cable car back in the good old days. See, back in the days, the cable car used to be pulled by a horse. You have the horse era where they just had the tracks laid out and the horses pulled it. And then the steam era when it was used by steam right after the horse. And then the whole cable car or the cable pulling system came into fray. It's one of the early inventions of how the cable car used to look. This is the Clay Street Hill Railroad and you can see how it used to look back in the days. Pretty cool. Used to conductor used to sit at top right there. He had passengers here in the front, also here on the side, and a little signage. Pretty cool. And for them to try to keep it in the most pristine way, we have to keep off 
no sitting here, no tourists taking pictures. It is free, so you could make a donation if you like to keep the cable car museum going, it going together. It's greatly appreciated. But again, man, this is what keeps the cable cars going. I think this is pretty cool. This whole pulley system is the reason why we have cable cars. And this is the main hub right here. When a cable car stops working, this is the first place they look. I think it's pretty cool. They got some old dime quarter like they had in the museum mosaic, but they also have some cool, cool items here from back in the days. Also behind the glass, they got a bunch of stuff here as well. They got a nail puller, a spoke shave, a divider, all sorts of things. Pretty cool. And to the right of it, they have more of those old school penny arcade machines. Right here is what the gripmen use when they're in the cable car. And it kind of gives you an explanation of how it works and how the gripman latches on to the cable when the cable car needs to stop and then releases it when it needs to move. And here are some examples of the grips. When you're on a cable car and you see this, all you see is the top part right there. You don't see this whole contraption. So this is pretty big. This is a pretty big setup right here. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Now this is like the chassis, or they call it the truck part of the whole cable car system. And if you look at it, it's one piece of mechanical work. Gripman, the grip. This is what goes on the tracks. That's, that's pretty ingenious. And the fact that they're still running today, it's pretty cool. Examples of how a worn cable right here on the curb would look and how the new cable on the left would look. There are the brake shoes, the brake pads. Pretty crazy stuff. This is an old fare gate or a fare uh, register that shows you how many people pay their fare. And look at the price, 25 cents. That's a little pricey from back then. I'm pretty sure that's just been added on because back then it used to be about a nickel, maybe even a dime to get on a cable car. 25 cents, that's a little pricey. They have a whole gift shop. We're gonna hit that in a second. We're gonna go check out the cable cars, the, oh, the vintage cable cars. Here's what it looks like from inside. You got the grip right there. And again, you see the gripman. You only see that top part from up here. And this is probably a vintage car because, yeah, it's vintage because these seats are not in the cable car anymore. It's usually seats like this on the side. So this is more of a vintage style car, maybe even no, nope, it's not a horse buggy one. It's just a vintage style one. Pretty cool. This one right here. This is the Sutter Street cable car. This is probably a horn, a horn, horse drawn carriage one. Just because I don't see a grip inside. But let me see if I can see it from on this side. Nope. Can't see it. So this is probably the grip style cable car from back in the days. Let's see if we see it from up here. You can come in here and sit down and watch a little uh, video. Sit in an old school cable car and watch an, an ex explain, explanation of how the cable car works. A plaque right here of Jack erected by the employees of the H Street Cable Car Line. Jack, Fido, and Tip. That's the name of the dogs that were here. This is a modern day cable car of how a cable car looks now. And back in the days, the rice roni that was always famous on the cable car because it was a San Francisco treat. 
And when Jerry Rice of the 49ers came on board, that was a nickname. But this is more what a cable car looks like now. The evolutions of cable cars right here. Model cable cars. This right there is called an omnibus. Then they had a United States Postal Service dedicated for the Postal Service. Then they have what they kind of look like right now. Then as we go around, again, the evolution of a cable car. This is what the cable car drivers used to have to use back in the days. To make change, they would have these little barrel changers right here. There's different types. And these are the cable car coins that it would give you right there. And then the ticket taker would use that to take your tickets. More coins, more vintage stuff. Then over here you have the badge of the cable car operators. You have one right there that says Gripman, employee, conductor. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Look at these tickets, these transfers as they call them. From 1905 to 1907, this is what they used. This is how they would know someone boarded or bought tickets for the bus or the cable car. And they had coupons if you wanted to buy coupons. Cool piece of San Francisco history right here. I have some of these coins laying around in the house. Some of them. Not anything this old, but I have some of them. The cool thing about these cable cars, especially these old ones, if you look at the sign right there, Central Avenue, Market Street, and the ferries. It no longer goes to Central Avenue. Market Street and the ferries. I don't even, yeah, it doesn't go all the way to the ferries, but I think that's pretty cool how they have this old vintage one still laying around here. Here's an old picture of how it used to look and how it used to operate. Yeah, this open one right here. That's how they used to operate it. it looked like back in the days, only the wealthy people can ride the cable cars. This wall says General Arthur Cigars, California Wire Rope Works. Probably just a whole explanation of how they laid down the tracks, laid down the cables. Over here you have a vintage cable car light. It's pretty cool. And then what the old cable car operators used to look like. You used to take your tickets. You have his conductor badge right there. Pretty cool. This right here is a streetcar and a lot of people always think it's a cable car but up there there's an explanation of the difference between a cable car and a streetcar. Cable car runs on cables below ground, where the streetcar runs on electricity, which is above ground, which is above the streetcar. That's why it has these things right here to connect to the cable. So that's the difference between the two. I saw this old picture of how this is Market and Embarcadero. Look at the old f the ferry building being built, but man, look at look what used to be down in Barcadero. This right here is Justin Herman Plaza right now, but you see the the five cent cigar, the drugstore. They're laying down the track for the cable cars right here, or it could have been the street cars because look at this cable car right there. It has the thing on top, but man, just imagine, imagine. That era right there. A little bit of more cable cars from back in the days. That was called the Omni Bus Cable Car Company. This one was the United Railroads Company. They had different destinations. The top right there, Market McAllister and Fulton. And this one, Market Ellis, Broderick Oak, and Golden Gate Park. Man, I wish they were still around. That'd be be cool. This is the size of the cable. Look how 
thick that cable wire is. Pretty thick. And here's the side view of how it's operated. I lick it. They gotta keep that lubed and oiled to go across that way. How something so easy looks on the street so complicated to run. For 51 cents you can get yourself a penny press. I love how it's 51 cents because you got to provide your own penny. Love it. But this is the gift shop and of course it's a bunch of San Francisco stuff. You can get yourself a cable car trinket of some sort. A snow globe of San Francisco. Bunch of cool stuff. Magnets galore. San Francisco magnets. But you're here at a cable car museum, you're gonna want a cable car magnet. Don't you think? I would. I would. And if you want to be annoying to someone, you could even buy a cable car bell. Place it somewhere in your house. And then when it's time to eat dinner, you ring the bell till everyone gets annoyed funny. Up here they got some vintage street signs. I'm not sure if they're vintage or they're just made to look vintage. This street right there, Brompton, I never heard of in San Francisco. This one right here either. I don't think any of these are from, Eucalyptus is from San Francisco. Barneville is San Francisco. Alamany San Francisco. Not sure about these other streets. They even have the numbers that go above the street signs that tells you, you know, which block you're going to go to. And I just checked with the person who working behind the counter, and he said these are authentic, not made to look authentic. And feeling the weight of this, this is authentic. It feels like a license plate, like from your car, but thicker. A little heavier metal back then. And for us Filipinos, we cannot leave without a cable car back scratcher. Alaska, scratch my liquid. I came down the stairs because there's this other little area down here where you can see how the bottom part of the cable car works. And these are old and rusty. Having a hard time to focus. But yeah. This is the bottom part. All right, one last look, the Cable Car Museum here in San Francisco. Again, free to come in, so definitely check this place out. And then when you're here, because to keep the operations going, you take some money, you donate it, just to keep the place going. Donations is appreciated. And to keep this place free, and going so we can sit here as San Franciscans or as tourists visiting San Francisco, we can keep this beautiful place running. I think it's cool. I think it's cool. It's a cool part of San Francisco history that we all should enjoy. Alright guys, that's going to do it from San Francisco's Cable Car Museum. Definitely check this place out, man. It's a cool place to visit. It is free. Again, make a quick donation. A dollar a person, two dollars a person, whatever you want to do. Keeps it free for us to come visit. Keep us free for us to enjoy. But definitely 
check this place out whenever you're in San Francisco. Again, we're on the corner of Mason and Washington. Parking is terrible here. So if you're coming here, you're in the city, tourist, you live here, if you want to brave what I did and go around four or 5,000 times to look for parking, do it. If not, got a shot. Check this out. Perfect way to end the video with an actual cable car coming down. Pretty cool. Cable car museum. There you go. That's the one we catch. Powell and Market for the Cable Car Museum. Priceless. Playing tour sure is fun. Got to do this more often. Definitely got to do this more often. How cool is that? To end the video with a cable car. Get ready to leave. And there you go with the Gritmans, the bell ringer, the conductor, all right here in this vintage San Francisco cable car museum. Check this place out. Definitely come visit. Thumbs up. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't. This is cool. This is probably a cool, different type where I'm not at the ocean or the bay today. Again, this was open today, so I decided to come check this place out. Thumbs up, like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't. If you have, do it again. Do it again. Thanks for watching, guys. This was fun. This was really fun. Check this place out. Vlogs ended, guys. Go in peace. This was definitely fun and educational, but it's time to go.